It's time for high school baseball on the NCW Life Channel. Today's broadcast is brought to you by the Wenatchee Valley YMCA. And now it's time to go to the diamond calling the action tonight. Here's NCW Life Channel's Grant Olson. Welcome everyone to a live broadcast tonight of Big Nine Baseball here at Rec Park in Wenatchee, just off the campus of Wenatchee High School next to the Apple Bowl. Tonight it's the Sunnyside Grizzlies and the Wenatchee Panthers. This is game two of the doubleheader. The first game ended in the sixth inning, Wenatchee 10 and Sunnyside nothing that propelled Wenatchee now to a 5-0 record in the Big Nine, 5-2 overall, dropped Sunnyside to 0-2 and 0-4 overall on this early season. So game number two coming up right here on the NCW Life Channel. Grant Olson with you along with Dan Koontz and we will bring you the action right here from beautiful Rec Park on this fantastic Friday afternoon here in the Wenatchee Valley. Coming up we'll have more from Rec Park including your starting lineups on the NCW Life Channel right after this. Rec Park and just about set to go here for game number two. The Panthers have taken the field and on the mound for the Panthers is junior Shane Huffiger making his first start and first appearance of the season for the Panthers. Has had some injuries early on in the season. Has been working hard with pitching coach Gary Llewellyn and now tonight gets his chance. Shane Huffiger on the mound for the Panthers. For Sunnyside and their lineup the first batter and batting first and playing uh, shortstop is Dylan Clampett for the uh, Grizzlies. Batting second and playing second base is Tyler Huntsaker. Batting third and uh, playing first base is Isaac Baronis. Batting cleanup tonight for the uh, Grizzlies. And playing right field is Nick Irvin. Batting fifth is Fabian Chavez. Chavez. He's the catcher. Batting sixth is Isaiah Lopez. At third base, Ed Almaguer. He is in center field. He'll bat seventh. Batting eighth is uh, Carter Carter, I should say, Parsons, he's the designated hitter. Jerifin Lopez is playing left field. And Ethan Montalgano, hope I pronounced that correctly, is rounding out the lineup for the Sunnyside Grizzlies. First up is Dylan Clampett for the Grizzlies against Hunsaker. First pitch, a little bit high and outside for ball one. Just underway, great to have you with us. I guess it's one and one so far in this bat for the hitter Dylan Clampett. Here's the pitch, fouled back to the cage. Count goes to a one and two. And this beautiful night, 60 degrees at first pitch time with the northwest wind at 20 miles an hour. So it is blowing out right about to left center field. This one's hit on the ground to the Panthers shortstop over to first base and that is out number one. So a quick out for the Panthers here in this game number two. As I mentioned, if you missed it earlier, Panthers won the first game by a final score of 10 to nothing. That'll bring up Tyler Hunsaker now. It was two for four in that first game. Had some solid hits. This one inside, a little bit high, ball one. Hunsaker also pretty darn good football player on the Sunnyside Grizzlies team during this season. Here's the pitch. I think it got a piece of him, and it did. And Hunsanger will take first base, hit by a pitch. So the first runner of game number two here. Number seven, Isaac Baronis. Isaac Baronis comes to bat now for the Grizzlies, the first baseman. One runner on, it's Hunsanger. One out here in the top of the first inning. Pitch just inside, ball one that time by Shane Huffaker. The thing about it, got a fresh arm here early in this season. There's still a long way to go. We're going all the way to May 4th inside on that pitch. 2-0 with -oh, -oh the count. The runner, Tyler Hunsaker, stays at first base. Outfield playing pretty much straight away for the batter, Baronis. This one high in the air, short left field. And the left fielder for the Panthers is there and makes the stop. Two outs now here, top of the first. That'll bring up Nick Irvin, the cleanup hitter. 
Urban playing right field. Two outs here. Runner still at first base, Tyler Hunsicker. Curveball, catches the outside corner, strike one. Nice pitch that time by Shane Huffaker. Huffaker, the wind up, here's the pitch. Did he go around? And it doesn't look like it. The pitch is outside and he didn't go around. Evens up the count now. One ball, one strike. Saker, not a large lead at first base, leaning towards second. Here's the changeup this time, gets him swinging on that second pair, second strike rather. Now we're one and two. Two outs here, top of the first. Shane Huffaker doesn't waste any time on that mound. Swing and a miss for out number three. And that will end the top of the first inning. After half an inning, it's no score here from Rec Park. We're back here in 60 seconds. our way to the bottom of the first inning and on the starting lineup for the Wenatchee Panthers TJ Shirting will be batting first he plays center Dalton Thomas is second in the lineup he is the shortstop Ronan Haynes bats third playing as a catching in this ball game Colton Dial he's batting cleanup and playing first base for the Panthers Thomas Black bats fifth he plays second base Colton Files is the designated hitter batting sixth tonight for the Panthers Chandler Holiday bats seventh he's playing right field. Carson Emerson is in the uh, number eight spot. He is playing left field. Jared Rubosh, uh, Rubosh is uh, the third baseman and Shane Huffiger, the pitcher, bats in the last spot. Grant Olson along with Dan Koontz. If Dan, there he is. Hi Dan. How are you, bud? I'm good. Nice of you to join us. Good to be back. We were speculating before we went on the air how many baseball games I've witnessed here at Historic Recreation Park, and I don't, in the hundreds. In the hundreds. I mean, I spent a great deal of uh, my youth between the time I was about eight to then I was about 15 here at this ballpark, so watched a lot of baseball. So batting first for the Panthers, TJ Shirting. Boy, this Panther team, Dan, is just loaded with youngsters. Here's the first pitch and pounded out into center field, uh -oh. and it's over the left center field, and it's over the center field's head. Here comes Shirting around second base. He's headed for third. The relay coming into the shortstop and starting things off a triple uh -oh. for Shirting. He goes past the bag. Did he get back? And he did just in time. You don't see a stand-up triple too often, do you? No, you don't. That's indicative of the win. We saw this earlier with uh, Ronan Haynes in the first game. He got one launched up in that uh, up in that jet stream, but it just kept going and going and going. That's exactly what happened there, I think. As we mentioned, blowing straight out right now from the northwest, and it was a solid 20 miles an hour. And next, up next is Dalton Thomas for the Panthers. Gets a piece of that one, fouls it back into the backstop. 0-1 the count. No out here in the Panther bottom of the first inning. DJ shirting at first base. Model Longo is on the mound. I should mention that again. The throw is wild down to third base, and that'll allow shirting to just stroll home. And the Panthers early lead one to nothing. Got to be an error on the catcher there. It sure does. Yep. Had some issues I noticed in the first game too. The uh, the catcher Chavez wasn't quite getting it back to the pitcher at times, and then he overthrows the third baseman. Still at the plate, Dalton Thomas for the Panthers gets a piece of that one. It's a pop fly to the second base area, and it's going to fall between this right fielder and the second baseman, and that'll be a single for Dalton Thomas. No man's land. Boy, it really is, and the wind kind of could have affected that a little bit too, Dan. It got way up there. I don't know if it's as strong right now as the wind we had maybe throughout some of that first game. We had some gusts in that game. But I don't think it's as strong as it was, say, no. maybe half an hour ago, but it's strong enough. If you're a right-handed uh, hitter with some, some pop, you can get that ball up there and it'll, it'll take off. Up next and batting third, number 25, Ronan Haynes. A good stick at the bat for the pan at the plate for the Panthers. Haynes is catching tonight in this second game for Wenatchee. On at first base, Dalton Thomas. Panthers one run around already. 
And there's a wild pitch now as Thomas will go to second base. And the Panthers have a runner in scoring position already. Ronan started last year as a sophomore, uh, Grant, and I believe he made all league second team as a sophomore. You don't see that too often, but nope. this kid has got some pop in his bat. He's a big, strong lefty last year at a game we, we covered here. He hit a home run into the Apple Bowl. That's a long pull. Boy, that is. Pitch foul down the first baseline, just outside. 295 down the right field line here at Rec Park. 385 dead center and 350 down that left field line. And Dan, you were telling me why it's 295 on that right field line. Yeah, it juts did, out a little bit yeah. from the concession stand over there, doesn't it? Didn't used to be that way when the old uh, stands, the old uh, original Lee Bofta field at the Apple Bowl also doubled up as the right field um, wall. It was a, it was our, when Angie had its own little green monster and instead of being down the left field line, it was down the right field line. And when they redid the Apple Bowl, uh, remodeled in the early 1990s, they put in a brand new concession stand, so they had to make the, the right field fence kind of jump back in towards Rec Park. So it's got a, a quirky little uh, part about that. And you see a lot of that even in pro ballparks, mm -hmm. Dan. The right field line is a little bit shorter than a lot of the yep. other fences as Ronan Hayes gets ball four and he will go to first base. The Dalton Thomas stays at second, so Haynes on first. And a courtesy runner in uh, high school sports. In case you're curious, you may have a courtesy runner, which is not a pinch runner, only for the pitcher and the catcher. They're the two most physically demanding positions on the field. And so, uh, although you just saw Ronan Haynes jog off the field, he's still very much in the lineup. Gavin Woodring is out there, Dan, and he must be fast because he came out a couple of times in that first game as well. So once again, the batter now, Colton Dial, and right up the middle, hard shot. That should score Dalton Thomas. It does from second base. Around to third is Haynes, and Dial with a one-run double. Almost decapitated the pitcher there. He went right down on his rear end on the rubber. That was a, that was a rocket shot. It really was. So Panthers in business again with runners at third and second base. And a two-run lead here in the bottom of the first. Number 15, Thomas Blakely. This is a very young Panther team. Boy, very young. Seven sophomores and six juniors on this 16-man roster. That's a young team. Batter now is Thomas Blakeney playing second base. Takes first pitch ball outside. 1-0 the count. Panthers, first four batters been on base. Two of them have scored. Gano, the pitch, and it's a That's deep shot off, once I again think. in center. Looks like he got a beat on it this time. Tagging at third base is Haynes. He will score easily. On to third base is Dial. And the Panthers lead it quickly now, three to nothing, on that sacrifice fly by Thomas Blakeney. Good start for the Panthers offensively. Get some runs, as you mentioned before at the start of the uh, of the broadcast. Uh, the starting pitcher for this, the second game, is making his first appearance of the year uh, in any capacity. He's a pitcher and an outfielder. He's been battling some injuries, but he's starting tonight. Now he's got some a little cushion to work with. Here's Colton Files, the DH first pitch, a little bit late on that one. Fouls it out into the parking lot here at Rec Park. Hope that didn't hit my car. Well, I didn't hear any glass breaks. That's here. good. I still got 97 more easy payments. <laughs> <laughs> Pitch in the dirt outside. One and one now the count. Once again on a third base, Colton Dial. So we've seen a triple, a single, a triple, two singles, and a double here for the Panthers in this first. This pitch also a little bit late and fouled over the first base, and actually over the sunny side dugout here at Rec Park. Between games, you and I got to go see that brand new indoor hitting facility that just went up this last summer. It is beautiful. That, it's down, down the left field line, it's nice. That is really impressive. What an advantage that is too, oh, isn't yeah. it? Amazing. Here's the one-two pitch right back to the pitcher, goes off his leg. And a nice bounce to the second baseman for out number two, but Colton Dial comes in to score, and the Panthers now lead it four to nothing here in game number two. Sunnyside's pitcher not really using his legs a great deal. He's all upper body, and that's not getting any pep on the ball. Not a lot of uh, zip to his pitches, and the, the Panthers are teeing off. 
Chandler Holiday comes to the plate now. Right fielder for the Panthers, number 10. Pitch high. You probably also noticed this, uh, Grant, even though now there's no runners on base, he's still pitching from the stretch. He is. Which you don't see too often. You don't. It's usually whatever you're most comfortable with if you're better pitching from the stretch. Ball is stung down the third base line, and it just fouled. Boy, that was close. That was close, wasn't it? Woo. There are a lot of pitchers who will always pitch from the stretch, regardless of whether there is a base runner on. Of course, the most famous incident of all, Don Larson. He threw his perfect game in the 1956 World Series, throwing from the stretch the entire game, never once threw from the windup. That's amazing. I didn't know that. I'm so glad you're here, Dan. Well, you know. Pitch outside, two and one the count now. Two down here, bottom of the first inning. Panthers already racking up the runs, four nothing here, bottom of the first. Here's the pitch inside again, a little bit low too. Now we're three and one. Panthers have had plenty of base runners here in the bottom of the first with this four nothing lead. Here's the three one pitch and it hits Holiday. That's what, the third or fourth uh, hit by pitch we've seen since we've been here. We got to watch, what, about half of the first game and and now this game. That's, it's it's still early in the year. And luckily, the, as we mentioned before, the sunny side pitcher doesn't have a lot of zip on his pitches, so my guess is that didn't exactly sting right. a great deal. Right. He, didn't, he doesn't look like he's too shaken up by getting hit in the small of the back there. So we've got baseball, as you mentioned, Dan, we're early on all through April, and we go all the way through May 4th when the Panthers end with a doubleheader at Eastmont. Here's a hit right up the middle, a beautiful shot. And that'll send Holiday to first, second, and he's gonna try third, nice base running, he's in there. How about that? By Chandler Holiday, nice piece of base running. He was, should have been out by 10 feet, but the shortstop did not know where he was as he was waiting for the throw to come in from the center fielder. Uh, he took his eye off the base runner, and um, if he had paid attention, the, 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 he would have been out at third by a mile, but he didn't know where he was. Just like that, Panthers are runners at first and third. Brings up Jared Rubosh, the third baseman. Pitched the first game, and that's going to be a hit as well over the shortstop's head. That'll score Holiday. As Rubosh, just a little bloop shot over the shortstop's head, and Panthers once again runners on first and second. Almost ready to bat around here in the first inning, Grant. They are. This is the final batter in the lineup here, and it's Shane Huppiger, the pitcher. Number one, TJ. Oop, I got that wrong. TJ Shirting. Back to the top of the lineup, Dan. We go. Ground ball right by the pitcher to the shortstop, and he can't get it. That will score uh, Emerson from second base. Alrighty, here comes Jared Rubosh home. He's going to score as well. As Shirting ends up on second base. Lots of defensive miscues by Sunnyside in this first inning. You gotta, you gotta give the advance base on the air by the center fielder. Didn't, didn't handle the ball cleanly. Obviously, uh, earlier the very first, uh, early on in the game, the catcher overthrew the third baseman on a pickoff attempt, and the gentleman who hit the triple to start the game is now standing on second base. Easily walked in. We've seen the shortstop uh, miscommunicate with the center fielder, not know where the base runner was. They threw behind the base runner, a manager's worst friend. So yeah, the the Panthers are raking the ball, no doubt about it. They're smacking it around a little bit, but Sunnyside not helping themselves with some defensive miscues early on. Seven runs on six hits for the Panthers here and an error on Sunnyside so far in this first inning. It's been a rough one, and, this, and you can just tell by watching even the first game that we watched quite a bit of that. This is an inexperienced Sunnyside yeah. team. There's no doubt about that. And again, I would put, if I was the official scorekeeper, I would have a couple of errors on Sunnyside. Certainly the overthrow on the pickoff at 30 is an right. error, and it was scored as an error, but, right. but allowing both runners to advance on the miscue by the center fielder who did not handle cleanly, that certainly could, be, could have been scored an error, and I think it should, probably should have been. So Dalton Thomas comes to the plate now. Shortstop, TJ Shirting, by the way, a triple and a single now in this game. First pitch to Thomas inside. Can he hit for the cycle in an inning? <laughs> <laughs> wow, yeah, good question. <laughs> On deck is Ronan Haynes. This one stung hard to the third baseman off his left shin, and that will get uh, Thomas to first base on a single and will send T.J. Shirting to third base. Still two outs here, bottom of the first inning. Panthers looking for more, already seven to nothing lead. 
For the uninitiated, they put in field turf in this historic ballpark. It's 80 years old, Rec Park is. They put in field turf a couple of years ago. Uh, usually an infielder's best friend. The manager is going to come out here and talk. So just quickly, uh, with the field turf, it cost them about an extra $10,000. It was the same time they were putting the field turf in at Lee Boff to field at the Apple Bowl, and they went ahead and uh, wrote down another check. And while the company was in town, they said, why not? So the infield here that you see uh, here on the NCW Live channel, uh, the infield is all field turf. It is green field turf. It is brown field turf. It looks like it's dirt and soil. It is not. It is field turf. It's artificial turf. And uh, that means true bounces. So it looks like we've got a pitching change, Grant. Should it is. It's it, for, it's it for Ethan Montalongo. And we'll take a break and let you know who's coming in for him and all the changes we might see here in this timeout. We'll take a 60-second timeout and come on back to Rec Park. This is Wenatchee Panther Baseball on the NCW Life Channel. So the starting pitcher for the Grizzlies, Ethan Monalgano, didn't even make it a half inning here. We're in the bottom of the first, gave up seven hits and seven runs to the Panthers. New pitcher is number 14, Samuel Sesteda. A right-handed pitcher. We'll see how he fares against this Panther lineup that's uh, hitting the ball here tonight, that's for sure. They kind of started late in that first game, a little slow start for the Panthers with only about four hits through, I think, three or four innings, and then their bats came alive, and boy, they haven't cooled down yet, Dan. No, they're hitting the ball very, very well. Uh, very impressed with uh, their, they haven't had to be patient. Uh, Jeff Zender uh, practices patience, like to, likes to see the the pitchers have to go fairly deep in the count, and then they're forced to throw something right over the meat of the plate. That hasn't been the case here. They've been throwing uh, baseballs right over the meat of the plate with uh, just just a couple pitches into an at bat. So hey, if it's a strike, you're supposed to swing at it. Ronan Hayes is the Haynes is the batter, maybe one of the best hitters on this team as well. The 12th batter in the bottom of the first inning for the Panthers on first base. Dalton Thomas on third base, T.J. Shirting. Here's the hit. It's solid one right the outstretched hands of the second baseman. And once again, Haynes will knock in a run. Coming all the way around from first to third is Dalton Thomas. And the Panthers lead it eight to nothing. We have to get you another score sheet, Grant. Boy, I might have. I brought extras. I'm glad I did. You may have to bring an extra pen or two as well. Once again, uh, courtesy runner. Again, only for the pitcher and only for the catcher. So the, uh, we do have a courtesy runner in for Ronan Haynes, being the catcher. And uh, the courtesy runner is uh, Ronan Haynes, of course, is not out of the game. Normally in baseball, if you're out of the game, you're out of the game. You don't get to come back in again. That's not the case with the courtesy runner. Next cleanup hitter, Colton Dial, playing first base for the Panthers. Sidearm delivery by the pitcher, Sesteda. And it's outside. I guess it's hit, caught the outside corner. Strike one, 0 1 the count. Panthers, eight runs on eight hits. This is the 13th batter here in the bottom of the first. Sesteda's pitch, once again, sidearm delivery outside this time, evens up the count at 1 and 1. saw a pigeon fly by and it's now roosting in the upper reaches of uh, Recreation Park, which is uh, not a good thing. Just a piece did, of that did one. Did you see the dial. kite that they put up? Yes, right. we yes. noticed that right yes. away. It's pretty darn cool, especially on a day like this. They're trying to scare the pigeons away because of this beautiful field turf. The pigeons are eating the little ivy buds, and then pigeons are doing what pigeons do. And so they have a kite that they've tied up, and it looks like a big, nasty crow, which I'm assuming is the natural enemy of the pigeon. And so far, so good. That's the first pigeon I've seen today. Another solid shot into left field. This time, uh -oh. Colton Dial. Uh -oh. There you go. And it gets by the left fielder. That's going to maybe clear the bases a little bit more as Dial goes to second, and Dalton Thomas will score, making it nine to nothing as Ronan Hayes goes over to third base. And once again, a defensive miscue. I mean, it was a solid base hit, but it rolled right through the left fielder's legs, and that cost them another base. Got to be another error, Gotta I would be think, too. Error, I would assume. Yep. There's the second baseman. Brings up Thomas Blakeney now, second baseman for the Panthers. Had a sacrifice fly his last time at bat. By the way, Colton Dial a double and a single now. That's four straight singles in this, this the last four batters for the Panthers. Now at nine hits here in the bottom of the first inning. It's a status pitch outside. 1-0 the counts, two outs. We've been on two outs for quite a while now. A lot can happen in baseball with two outs, mm -hmm. can it, Dan? 
Once again, runner at third base, Ronan Hayes. At second, Colton Dial swing, and just a piece of it that time for Blakeney. Evens up the count at one and one. Good off-speed pitch by that uh, sunny side pitcher. He was way in front of that. And Samuels has stated, we don't have ages for the sunny side players, but he looks awfully young out there. What do you think, Coach Zender, Dan? Does he prefer maybe a young team like this or maybe a little more experience? He's got three seniors, but all of those sophomores, it's got to be kind of exciting when they're pretty darn good ball players. Well, we'll take you back two years ago when the Panthers uh, lost one game the entire yeah. year. They lost in the state semifinals. They ended up finishing third. So they went, I believe it was 27-1 and one yeah. on the year. And that was a senior-laden team. They had a lot of seniors, but the junior varsity and sophomore teams were just as dominant. It was hard to figure out how good they were because they never got to play on the varsity because right. the varsity was so good. Um, well, this should be some kind of team by yeah. the time these players are seniors. There's a line shot to the second baseman, and that will end this inning. And what an inning it was for the Panthers. Nine hits, nine runs, and one error by the Grizzlies. And after one inning of play here at Rec Park, it's the Panthers nine and the Grizzlies nothing. We're back in 60 seconds. Start for the Wenatchee Panthers in game number two of this doubleheader tonight against the Sunnyside Grizzlies. Nine runs and nine hits in the bottom of the first inning. And that's the way you want to start a ball game as Fabian Chavez comes to the plate now. No hits yet for the Grizzlies. Chavez's first trip to the plate. And he's the catcher for the Grizzlies. First pitch by Huffaker is fouled off into the screen. 0-1 the count. Be interesting to see how Mr. Huffaker uh, responds with all of those runs. He was kind of sitting there waiting to go out and take the mound. That's a good point. That was a long rest and a long half a inning. That one met, cut the plate. 1-1 one and one now our count. Isaiah Lopez on deck. Ed Almaguer in the hole for the uh, Grizzlies. Here's the pitch by Huffaker. Just a piece of it, and it got the leg of Chavez. That hurts. That does hurt. Especially on the instep, if you do that before. That's just a stinger. Ooh, and he's feeling that right yeah. now. Might have caught him on the shin or the knee even, Dan. He's sure holding that lower leg. Well, of course, you said it hits that inside of your foot. Boy, that hurts. Yeah. They're going to give him a little bit of a break here. Dale Blair, Wenatchee trainer extraordinaire. Coming out to take a look at it. One of the very best uh, athletic trainers you're going to find anywhere in the state of Washington in the prep world is Dale Blair, as we well know. Gosh, he is. He's amazing. Injury timeout brought to you by Confluence Health, Wenatchee's premier treatment center for all sports-related injuries. And Chavez, boy, he's feeling that right now in that left leg. I think you just got to wait that thing out, too. There's no mm -hmm. rubbing that'll help. There's no anything. You just got to kind of wait it out. One and two, the count, by the way, on Chavez. Just starting here, the top of the second inning. He's their shortstop. They don't hate to see them shuffle their lineup around because of that kind of injury. In I, fact, I think he's a catcher, Dan. Oh, is he a catcher? Yep. Well, that's even worse, actually. It is. Yeah. Right. Usually, you just bring two catchers with you on these double headers. One does one game, and one does the other. So, Boy, that's still stinging a little bit, too. Yep. It's like he's ready to give it another go here. Nobody on, just underway, top of the second inning. Three errors now on Sunnyside, all in that bottom of the first. Here's Huffaker's pitch, and it's hit hard, but foul down the left, left field line. One and two the count on Fabian Chavez. Wind up in the delivery from Huffiger. Took something off that one a little bit high, though, and evens up the count at two and two. Next up for the Panthers is a Tuesday, April 10th matchup at home against Ike right here at Rec Park, and then a doubleheader that same Friday at Ike. Three and five the times there as Chavez misses, swings and misses. No, he was looking Did, at it. Okay, I was looking down. Yeah, just, you were looking at your notes. Yeah, that was a, that's an inverted K in the world of scorekeeping. So that's two strikeouts in a row now for Huffiger. 
going back to the uh, top of the first inning. That brings up Isaiah Lopez now, the third baseman. Strike outside corner for Huffiger, 0-1 the count. Spring break is next week, and uh, for those of you who don't know exactly how the schedule works out, each team in the Columbia Basin Big Nine, there are seven of them, uh, each, and there's a seven-week season, but you don't necessarily, it's an eight-week season, I'm sorry, so every team has a bye week. They have a week where they do not play anybody, and uh, for the last couple of years, when Anchi's bye week has actually been spring break. That's perfect. Last year, Coach Zender took his team to uh, Little League practices and did clinics with a lot of the Little League kids uh, in both Wenatchee and East Wenatchee area over spring break. Just a very to keep cool loose. thing to do. Yep. Here's Huffaker's pitch gets by the catcher, Ronan Haynes, and goes to the backstop, and that evens up the count at two and two. One out here, top of the second inning, nine nothing, Panthers on top. Huffiger, one of the six juniors on the Panthers team. He'll be back next year. Boy, this should be a loaded team next year. Here's the pitch. Change up that time. Took a little bit something off at high, though. And then he makes the count full at three and two. Last year's team was young, of course. They finished second in the Columbia Basin uh, Big Nine in the regular season standings. Failed to make it out of the district playoffs, but they got a lot of good, uh, a lot of good experience last year. Now they're back again. Panthers, after losing their first two non-league games, have now reeled off four straight, make it five straight after that first game tonight. Wins in the big nine. Well, Richland must be something. Beat this Panther team 12 to nothing earlier on. I'm not sure Richland's lost a game this yet this year. I wouldn't be surprised. These two teams have a really good rivalry. Last year, uh, Wenatchee, I think, beat Richland like one nothing here at Rec Park or maybe down in Richland. The year before that, they had a great game. Richland's had a very good baseball program for a while, and that's what, that's what Jeff Zender is trying to build here he's not just building he's not just recruiting players he's building a program so when Anchi is going to be at least competitive year after year after year after year boy he's off to a great start too and that's part about uh, taking the team and going to little league practices and going to little league games and getting the kids involved in baseball and making sure that when they get to their high school years they continue to want to com continue to play baseball for the Panthers or the Wildcats depending on your side of the river so Isaiah Lopez on at first base and Al McGuire at the plate for the Grizzlies. Right-handed batter facing the right-handed pitcher Huffiger. Pitch a little bit low. That's three balls and no strikes now. Strikeout to start the inning from Chavez and a walk and now at the plate, as I mentioned, and it's not Al McGuire. It looks like somebody else is in now, number nine. Let's see who that is, and that is Jamie Jimenez now. Swings late at that one and goes out into the parking lot. I'm trying to see if it's your car over there, Dan. No, Doesn't that's look yours. like it. That's yours. It hit your uh, <laughs> hit your Bentley. Actually, it's Madison's car, oh, so that would it? be okay. worse. Okay. Yes. <laughs> Here's the pitch by Huffiger. Curveball outside corner, strike three. Beautiful pitch. And the second strikeout now in this inning, the third in the ball game for Huffiger. And both of them looking uh, in this inning. Here, number 23, Carter Parsons. So Jimenez now in, and he will play center field at Almaguer. On the bench for the Grizzly, that brings up Car uh, Carter Parsons. He's a designated hitter tonight. He's a big boy, too, a right-handed hitter. First time up in the ball game. Nice sidearm delivery by Huffiger there. Gets him swinging. It's 0-2 quickly to Carter Parsons. Looks like Mr. Huffaker has settled down just a little bit. He looks good, as we mentioned before, first start of the year. Another curve oh, right yeah. over the outside corner, strike three, and that takes care of the Grizzlies with three strikeouts for Huffaker at the end of the uh, top of the second inning as we go to the bottom of the second. Still Wenatchee nine and Sunnyside nothing. We're back to Rec Park in 60 seconds. Stay with us. No runs, no errors for the Grizzlies at the top of the second inning as we head to the bottom of the second now. First up for the Panthers will be the designated hitter, Colton Files. Remember, 14 batters came to the plate in the bottom of the first inning for the Panthers. 
that's a lot of batters even for high school. And you get these mismatches in high school. Usually the smaller schools, uh, uh, Grant, you'll see some cra pretty crazy scores in softball and, right. and uh, in baseball. You'll see those 19 to 2 kind of scores. And it's, it's, it, uh, it's, it's be sometimes painful, obviously, if you're on the two side of that ledger. But um, you'll, you'll, it happens at this level. It simply does. It really does. Once again, Colton Files will lead things off for the Panthers, followed by Chandler Holiday, and in the hole is Carson Emerson for the Panthers. Incidentally, just across the way from us at Lee Boftel Field at the Apple Bowl, the Wenatchee Valley Thunder are doing a little walk through our local lacrosse team, and we'll have Thunder lacrosse tomorrow at 1 o'clock here on the NCAA Life Channel. Colton Files, by the way, one of the few Panthers that didn't score in that first inning. Ground out to the pitcher for out number two in the bottom of the first. Takes first pitch outside, 1-0 and the count. What if his teammates give him a bad time? Thomas Blakeney and Colton Files, the only players that didn't score in that first inning. This pitch outside takes the count to 2-0. and once again, young pitcher Samuel Sesteda on the mound, the second pitcher of the game. The uh, starting pitcher was taken out in the bottom of the first. Here's a sidearm wild pitch. It gets by the catcher, Chavez. And it's 3-0 and the count. New rules instituted last year. Um, some controversy uh, in the coaching community about it. They used to be you were simply innings pitched, regardless of the amount of times you tossed a baseball for the pitcher. That's a little, just a little inside and walks him. Uh, now it's a pitch count. And it's up to the individual teams to keep track of the pitch count. And they must be exact. Most of the schools, certainly the bigger schools, your Wenatchee's, your East Monster, Sunny Sides, they have a coach who's assigned to do just specifically that. And so you are limited to the amount of pitches you can throw within a certain time period. Chandler Holiday at the plate now is hit by a pitch his first time up. Another inside pitch. Boy, take some take some guts just to stand there after you've been hit yeah. once. And he didn't even flinch there yeah. as that pitch was inside. One and all the count. Colton Files on at first base. This one behind holiday as files easily goes down to second base and Sunnyside's having some pitching issues that's for sure first pitcher in the first game Dan looked like they kind of had things under control mm -hmm. a little bit from the mound they did make a change late in that game but boy this has been kind of a train wreck here to start this second game lots of lacks of uh, la lacking of concentration I mean just right there the ball was tossed back to the pitcher and he kind of hit off the end of the mid and he kind of walked after it there and that's right down the middle is Holiday taking all the way on that one. Two and one now the count. Run at second base is Colton Files in this 9 nothing Panther lead. So Stata looks in at the sign. Once again out of the stretch. And that ball is pounded by Holiday into left center field. Coming around is Files around third. He'll score as Holiday stands up running into second base. And there it is. The 10 run lead for the Panthers. 10 to nothing on 10 hits now for the Panthers. And I, as a pitcher, I can tell you this. Uh, pitched uh, almost my entire youth. I know exactly what that young man from Sunnyside is feeling. He could not even get anywhere near the plate for four or five pitches in a row. And so he just went back there and basically threw a batting practice pitch right, right over the heart of the plate just to remind himself how to throw a strike. Dan, you're exactly right. I yeah. pitch too, and that's exactly what yeah. you do. You're just trying to groove it in there to make sure it's a strike. Here's Carson Emerson now for the Panthers. Runner on second, almost hits Emerson. That's a slow start. Boy, I guess so, but Holiday does get down from second base to third. That may have been the slowest run from second to third I have ever seen. I may uh, have been he, able to run on there faster than that. I mean, I'm he, slow. He was running on quicksand there. I don't know what was going on. <laughs> um, Want to know the count I, on Emerson? Did Coach Zender send him? Well, the ball got loose from... Uh, yeah, but not very much. I think he did that on his own volition. Ball hit hard again. Nice play, though, by the third baseman for the Grizzlies. Gets it down to first. Not in time, though. And that will score Holiday. And that's going to be a base hit. It was cleanly fed, but... Uh that's another base hit for the Panthers. That's number 11. 11 runs, 11 hits. And it's time for another mound visit. Two hits now for Carson Emerson. Jared Rubosh comes to the plate. He's had a hit already. And it looks like we're going to see a pitching change, and we will take another break. Our score, we're in the bottom of the second inning, and it's the Panthers 11, sunny side nothing. We're back here at 60 seconds. Stay with us.
New pitcher on the mound for Sunnyside. It's Ed Almaguer, who actually started this game out in center field. He's a lefty, so a little bit different look for the Panthers now. They've seen a lot of right-handed pitching in these, well, first game in two innings or so, and now they're going to see a lefty on the mound. Once again, up to bat for the Panthers is Jared Rubash. He'll be followed by Shane Huffiger, and then it's right back to the top of the order in TJ Shirting for Wenatchee. And we'll get back to what I mentioned uh, just a few moments ago. This is the third game of the week for both of these teams, and this is when we start talking about the pitching count. Now, granted, uh, Sunnyside's pitchers uh, in both games uh, getting shelled pretty good, but if you count the first game and the second game and the game they played on Tuesday, this is probably the eighth or ninth player for Sunnyside to take the mound this week, I'm guessing. So with Huffiger having a fresh arm for the Panthers, he could pretty much pitch this whole game if you wanted to. As long as the as long as Sunnyside chases the early pitches and keeps his pitch count down, that could certainly be the case. But as the first start of the year for uh, for Mr. Huffaker, I wouldn't be surprised with this lead if, uh, if maybe Coach Zender uh, pulls the plug maybe a little bit early just to rest him. On the other hand, again, the pitch count. We really don't know where they sit on that. That's a whole new coaching thing that the coaches have to work on now. And his other pitchers get a rest while he's yeah. in here pitching. All right, here we go. Once again, up to plate. Up to the plate is Jared Rubosh. Swing and a miss. High fastball, and it's 0-1. On at first base, Carson Emerson for the Panthers. This 11 to nothing ball game. 11 hits for the Panthers on 11 runs. Pitch by Almaguer is wild. It goes past the catcher Chavez, and down to second base is Carson Emerson. Not a lot of room between the batter's box and the backstop here at Historic Recreation Park. As you can see, I think it's probably about the minimum that you can have for a baseball. Oh, it's got to be. There's the pitch. Slow roller to the third baseman, and he kicks it. That will allow the, uh, Emerson to go to third from second. Now the Panthers have runners at first and third. Fourth error of the game in two innings for the Sunnyside Grizzlies, and probably could have been a fifth as well. That's, that's, a, that's an E5. And now back to the top of the order. And TJ Shirting, a triple and a single so far in this ball game. Here we are, the bottom of the second inning. Runners at the corners for the Panthers. Al McGuire, the pitch, and it's fouled back over the backstop. Right on the roof of the concession stand here at Rec Park. They were sleeping in there. They're not now. Yeah, they're not sure. anymore. Yeah. Absolutely. Shirting right-handed batter facing the lefty Al McGuire. Owen won the count. No outs here. Bottom of the second. Here's the pitch. It's swung on, popped up on the infield. Second baseman is over there, and that is Tyler Huntsaker to make the catch for out number one. one in a row. Yeah. Been a long time since Sunnyside has recorded an out. The shortstop. Right. So one out here, bottom of the second. Dalton Thomas comes to the plate, the shortstop for the Panthers. Another right-handed batter. Panthers still runners at the corners. Here's Al McGuire, left-handed, and it's high and a little bit outside. 1-0 oh the count. Once again, mentioning the field turf, which takes up the infield here at Recreation Park. Uh, on television, it may look like dirty. It is not. Of course, it is field turf. So the entire infield all the way to the very edge of the outfield is artificial. It is field turf. And for baseball, it's a fairly unique characteristic. First of all, this is the only ballpark in the Columbia Basin Big Nine that has a field turf infield. And for the visiting players, it's very much a disadvantage because you cannot dig into the bucket in the batter's box. Absolutely. There's, there's little holes there that get worn down over the course of the weeks and the months, but you can't dig in like you would as if it was a dirt batter's box. And we talked about sliding is a little bit different on this turf, too. you got to start a little bit later on your slide. It's not as slick as you think it would be. And uh, and I've seen I've seen games here where guys would slide into second base and they end up three feet short because right. they started right. a normal slide and they just like Velcro. 2-1 pitch hit in the sharply into left field. That'll score the Panthers Carson Emerson from third base and send Jared Rubosh over to second. So Panthers runners at first and second. Second single in a row now for Dalton Thomas. 12 runs, 12 hits. That's a lot of offense. 
Boy, I don't know if I've seen this much this early in a game in a long, long time. Now it's Ronan Haynes, a lefty against a lefty, Dan. And I think Ronan is probably licking his chops right here. I'm thinking so, too. Runners, good leads on first and second. Here's the pitch from Almaguer. Ronan all over that one, but it's popped it's up the high. the field fly rule. He's automatically out. Oh, my. He's still out. Runners are still... Uh... <laughs> the ball gets away from the shortstop, yep. uh, yep. Tyler Hunsaker. Ronan Hayes was out in the moment that ball was got up there. The, 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 the call was plainly made by the field umpire. And, of course, uh, the runners advance at their own. Own, own risk, and that's what we used to do. That's what my dad taught us. Right. On the infield fly rule, drop the ball, because more often than not, the runners will take off, forgetting that the rule is, and boom, you get a double play. Exactly right. That almost happened right there. I'm not 100% sure the shortstop dropped that ball on purpose. Second out now for the Panthers. At the plate is Colton Dial to third base and touches the bag, and that is out number three. So the Panthers, once again, three hits, three more runs here in the bottom of the second. Another error on the sunny side, and after two innings of play, it's the Panthers 12 and the Grizzlies nothing. We're back with more from Rec Park right after this. and Dan Koontz back at Rec Park for Big Nine Baseball here live tonight on the NCW Life Channel, headed to the top of the third inning. And yes, you're going to hear this right. It's the Panthers 12 and Sunnyside nothing. The Panthers 12 runs on 12 hits in this one. Hunsik uh, Huffaker still the pitcher out there for the Panthers. I think he'll probably go another inning, and that might be it, Dan, for him. The player's kind of acting like it might be his mm -hmm. last last time out there. As Jerifin Lopez comes to the plate, Dan, this is finally getting through the order for Sunnyside here. The ninth batter in the lineup. Huffaker's pitch strike down the middle. Reading the Bruce report uh, issued by your friend of mine, Mr. Bruce Bennett, one of my favorite people. I was rather surprised to learn Grant that since Sunnyside joined the Columbia Basin Big Nine seven, what is it, seven, eight years ago now, I want to yeah. say? Uh, they have never defeated the Wenatchee Panthers no on kidding. the baseball diamond. I forgot to get the Bruce report. Yeah, I think Wenatchee is like 37-0 and 0 or something like that against Sunnyside. And one, two, three for Lopez and a strikeout. That's first out here in the top of the third inning. Looks like the wind's died down just a skosh. I'm looking, we have actually two American flags we can reference here. The one at Lee Bofto Field of the Apple Bowl, quite a ways away, but also way up there, probably a 100-foot tall pole. That looks like it's moving pretty good. The Ameri other American League flag, uh, the uh, another American flag, I should say, which is right in the uh, left center field uh, gap, right behind the left center field fence between Rec Park and the city pool. It doesn't look like it's moving quite as no, much. No, it doesn't. Here's the batter, Dylan Clampett, slow roller to the shortstop, and he can't handle it, and that could be an error, the first one on the Panthers here. Yeah, that's a tough call. It was a, it was a low, kind of a slow grounder. I don't know if he really needed to rush that as much as he did. I think if he could have taken his time and tried to do it with both hands, he might have been able to get him. Uh, official score says it is an error, so first error of the game for the Panthers. So Dalton Thomas with that error. Same Another kind of slow ball. roller to Huffiger. He's going second base, and they won't Everybody's get the lead safe. runner there. Yep. Everybody's safe. You're right. Tough, tough play for Mr. Huffiger. He filled it very cleanly. Nobody was there to cover second base, and he waited for somebody to get there. Probably the more prudent move would just get the obvious runner at first, get that out. Now, who knows? And he's got a little rally going here. Kind of something cooking here. Two on, one out here. Top of the third inning. Here's the pitch from Huffiger. Fouled back into the backstop. Owen won the count. So fun doing games here at Rec Park, Dan. This place That's has been around a long facility. time. 80 years, it? yep. Rec Park and Apple Bowl were both built at the same time. They were uh, back in the Depression. They were FDR program. I can't remember if it was a you know, CCC program or something along those lines, WPA. Slow roller, second base, Ooh. and a bad throw there. That will allow the Grizzlies to score as Clampett comes around. The throw goes home, not in time. And Sunnyside is on the board as Clampett comes all the way around after the air to score in the first run for the Grizzlies. Matchy getting a little sloppy defensively. Um, throw was wide. That's got to be an E on the throw there. Well, it sure does. Yep. Third baseman Jared Rubosh. 
I think, that is an error. I think Coach Zender will have them working on their double play combos uh, over the I spring that, break. I think that might be a possibility, yes, as Nick Irvin comes to the plate now. Irvin struck out his last time up. Big right-hander against the right-hander, Huffiger. Wind up in the pitch right back at Huffiger. He had it for a second. Now he goes home to get the runner coming in and he get him. That's Hunsaker. They got it home. And that's out number two for the Panthers. Now runners at first and second. I think he thought that the ball got through or that the pitcher didn't wasn't able to control it because as soon as the batter made contact, the runner at third took off for home. And of course, he never even made it to home plate. Again, Sunny Sutton not used to sliding on a field turf. And it does grab you. It Absolutely. Will, it will grab your uniform like Velcro and just make you stop. Kind of looks like gravel or something, yeah. a little tiny gravel. Here's the catcher, Fabian Chavez, now at the plate. Ooh. Right back at Huffiger, makes the stop, and that is out number three, Woo. just like that. How do you do? Woo. So, as we head to the bottom of the third inning, no hits, one run, and two errors on the Panthers. Our score, it's Wenatchee 12 and Sunnyside 1. Back again at 60 seconds. Wenatchee Panther broadcast is brought to you by the Wenatchee Valley YMCA for youth development, healthy living, and social responsibility. It's also brought to you by Global Care, Global Car Care, Heritage Memorial Chapel, and Les Schwab. And we thank all of our sponsors for helping out Wenatchee Panther sports. Normally, uh, Heritage Memorial Chapel uh, sponsors the coaches interview. Didn't do one right. today because we're doing the second game of a doubleheader, and we like to make sure the coaches can do what they need to do between games. Didn't want to interrupt Coach Zender and his uh, prepping his team for game number two, so we went ahead and bypassed that. But we certainly want to thank Heritage Memorial Chapel for sponsoring the non-existent coaches interview. <laughs> that brings up Thomas Blakeney for the Panthers. First batter here, bottom of the third inning. Blakeney, 0 for two, uh, two in this ball game. A sacrifice fly in the first, and in the second, a fly out to the second baseman. Want to know the count? Once again, and Al McGuire still on the mound, the lefty for Sunnyside outside on this pitch, 2-0 now the count. Just a beautiful spring day here. Late afternoon in the Wenatchee Valley, wind dying down somewhat, but a nice day with temperatures right around 60 degrees. Here's the windup and delivery from Al McGuire and catches the outside corner, 2-1 and one now the count. And I see a number of uh, students here, which is remarkable considering that uh, at 3 o'clock when school got out, spring break started. And, Nine uh, days of no school. Oh, my. Counting the weekend, so that's pretty sweet for the students. 2-1 count. Here's Al McGarrett in the delivery, and it gets past Chavez, the catcher. Of course, when you and I were going to school, that wasn't the case. There was no such thing as spring break. Didn't course. have a spring no, break. No, no, no. We went every, every day, didn't it? But then again, I got out of school like May 21st. That's true. And not June 11th, so... We had spring break when I was in school. I didn't. We're just, that, well, that's true, because, you, well... Yeah. You had harvest. Don't say it. Yeah, we yeah. had harvest. Yeah. And that is ball four as Blakeney trots down to first base. Coach Zender doing some singles down the line. I don't know if he's looking uh, for a hit and run. When you have a, a, an 11 run lead like the Panthers do in the bottom of the third inning, it allows uh, Coach Zender to maybe do some things he wouldn't normally do. He's certainly not going to try to rub in the score or anything like that. That's going to be a base hit. Colton Files drills this one out into center field. Nicely played out there as Blakeney heads around second to third. And there goes uh, Files into second safely. Nice base running. And the Panthers now have something cooking here in the bottom of the third with runners at second and third, and nobody out. That was a hit and run, and uh, probably maybe should have scored. It kind of just jogged around the bases there, number 15 for the Panthers. And I didn't notice what the sign was yeah. from the coach I here think to that send was him a or hit, not. That was a hit and run from the get-go. And again, Coach Zender is not going to try and win this game 30-4. to four. That's just not what he's going to no. do. But uh, players need to understand situational hitting when they get to those 4-3 games that are coming down the pike. Right. And there's just, that short backstop, Dan. Yep. Maybe the runner at third, Blakeney, could have made it. Mm -hmm. But Chavez played the deflection off the back. And just about perfectly. Kept Blakeney at third base. Panthers two on, 
Nobody out here, bottom of the third. And I think Coach Zender understands these kind of games are anomalies, you know, in this league. You're not going to have too many of these strange games. What was the score right. on uh, Tuesday? It was 14 to nothing. It right? was. And then uh, earlier when HU won on, a, on the 10 run rule, 10 nothing. So they've played Sunnyside twice this week and won both of them without having to go to seven innings. Right. And this one's headed that direction as well. But but Coach Zender understands that. And he's a, he's a class act. It does give him the chance to, to experiment. Right. Work on hit and runs. Work on some bunting, things like that. So when they, when later You're down. So right about that. Later too. on in the year when you get into those one nothing, two one, four, three kind of games, you have the skill set you need to pull off the kind of play that Coach Zinner will be looking at in a much more uh, tense and much closer ball game. Two and one the count. Kind of a change up there, but it was high by Al McGarry. Takes the count to three and one. Chandler Holiday at the plate. He'll be followed by Carson Emerson and Jared Rubash. Holiday so far was hit by a pitch and a single has scored two runs. Lefty delivers. This ball's hit That's hard in the into left. Framed. What? Played well out there. Tagging at third base is Blakeney. He'll score. Staying at second base, Colton Files. And now it's 13 to 1. That seemed, that, that catch was actually harder than it looked. Uh, looked basically like a can of corn, but the sun is right into the left fielder's eyes. Boy, it really is, that's too. A that's a tough shadow. spot this time yeah. of day out yep. there. So the fact that he stuck with it and kept his eye on the ball, that's actually a very good catch. It was much harder than it looked on television. Kind of like wake up on H.E. Valley. <laughs> Plus the flag's flying right out yep. to him, so a little bit of wind to deal with there. First pitch to Emerson is fouled back. Owen won the count, one out now. It'll be followed by Jared Rubosh, then back to the top of the order again, and TJ Shirting. Ball gets by Chavez again. No, Nobody moves Is on second base is Colton Files. And Colton probably could have made it. The ball didn't have a lot of pep to it, and he kind of hit the backstop and stayed there. But, again, at this point, it's really not necessary. You know, you don't need to take, no. take third on that kind of deal in this kind of game, a 12-run lead. That would be rubbing it in, I think, a little bit. It would. Al McGuire, the lefty, delivers, and a shot down the opposite field. Nicely done by Emerson, and a pretty good play, too, uh, by the first baseman, Baronis. As the Panthers have runners at first and third, Colton Files goes to third, and Emerson on first. And that brings up Jared Rubosh now, the third baseman. And in fact, we've got a different player in. It's the speedster, I believe, and it's Gavin Woodring. He's a junior. Another junior. Woodring, Woodring, right-handed hitter. Once again against the lefty, Al McGuire. This one right down the middle, strike one. Panthers runners at the corner, Colton Files at third, Carson Emerson at first. One out here in the bottom of the third inning. Catches the outside corner this time, working from inside to outside, and it's going too quickly now on Gavin Woodring. We see a lot of players in this game today, in this second game, Dan, I would think. I think both coaches will probably empty their benches and get some guys uh, who don't normally see a great deal of time out in the field, some time out in the field. One and two as that pitch is outside. It can't be very fun for a Sunnyside player to take the long bus ride all the way up to Financial play two baseball games and not get in. No, it can't know. be that much fun. Swing and a miss and the first strikeout of the ball game by any pitcher for Sunnyside. And that's out number two here, bottom of the third inning, back to the top of the lineup now, and T.J. Shirting, a triple, a single, and a pop out to the catcher so far for Shirting. And it's he's batting. just a sophomore. Yeah, it's just amazing, sophomore. isn't it? Right-handed batter, still runners at the quarter, late on that swing, strike one. Maybe Almaguer settling down a little bit out there, Dan. He's had better control here in the yep. last inning. Good lead off first base by Emerson. And on at third is Colton Files. Here's the pitch high. That evens up the count at one and one. I like that uh, batting stance by TJ. I like the open stance. If you see a pitch that you like, you can keep the bat farther back in the zone and get it around quicker. 
good basic hitting technique, that open stance. He does have great style, great technique, you're right. Ooh, that almost hit him. He tried not to move, and it still <laughs> went on to, behind him. We've seen a lot of pitches behind we really right-handed have. hitters today, haven't we? we? Saw a couple in the first game as well. Two and one now, the count. Two down here, bottom of the third inning. Panthers, 13 runs on 14 hits. The Panthers have committed three errors. But it's been a dominating second ball game here. First one was pretty much dominating two at 10 nothing. This one low, three and one the count. As the Wenatchee Valley Thunder continue to go through their walkthrough over there, Dan. I guess a little, what do you call that? A pregame practice, maybe? Yeah, they, they, they got a game tomorrow against Chihuahua right. at one, and they're not gonna they're not gonna break a big sweat. Shirting gets the walk, and he'll head to first base. Panthers now with the bases loaded. Bases loaded for the number two hit, number two hitter. Yeah, it's a <clears throat> Dalton Thomas. So three singles in this ball game for Dalton Thomas. Four singles you could have in the bottom of the fourth inning. That's something you just don't hear every day. Here's the pitch by Almaguer, just high and a little bit outside. Ball one, one and oh the count. And Ronan Hayes is up uh, on deck and he's in the uncomfortable position of having to take his practice swings with his catcher's gear on with two outs. <laughs> Late swing hit down the first baseline. You're right. That's what you got to do if you're a catcher, right? Yep. And Ronan Hayes, two for three on the day, as I mentioned, or Dan mentioned, on deck. Dalton Thomas, three for three, trying to make it four for four here and score a run, maybe two. Here's the pitch. Late swing again and go a little closer to that right field line. Had some zip on it, too. Hit the uh, support tower from one of the light poles down the right field line. Don't see that too often. One and two now the count. Still two down, bottom of the third inning. It's been a long game for just two and a half innings so far, Dan. Well, I believe the bottom of the first inning took about 20 minutes oh, to I think play. It did. When actually putting nine on the board to start the game, that'll do it. Here's the pitch by Al McGuire, a change up right over the outside corner. That was a dandy, and that takes care of the Panthers here in the bottom of the third. So the Panthers pick up a couple more hits, another run, and no errors for the Grizzlies. And as we head to the top of the fourth inning, it's Wenatchee 13 and Sunnyside 1. 60 seconds, we're right back to Rec Park. Stay with us. Direct Park, Grant Olson along with Dan Koontz, new pitcher on the mound for the Panthers, and he is senior Kyle Byers, right-handed thrower. Big kid out there, Dan, and a, what a nice job on the mound for Shane Huffaker. His first outing of the year, Dan, gave up one run, no hits. Mm. What else can you ask for on a fresh arm? That's pretty good. That's exactly what Coach Zender was looking for, and also the pitching coach for the Wenatchee Panthers, uh, Gary Llewellyn, uh, who's been working uh, with young Mr. Huffaker uh, on all kinds of different mechanics and now we got it in a real life experience and came through with flying colors. So that's gonna make uh, Coach Zender feel pretty good about, as he said, uh, talking to me before the game, just another, you can never have another enough good fresh arms in high school baseball. And as we mentioned before, with these new pitch count rules that they have, uh, right. players who may have never pitched before in their baseball career, Little League or Junior High or Babe Ruth or Legion, whatever, may end up being pitching in high school. That's right. Nice change up that time. By Byers over the plate, strike two now, 0-2 on Isaiah Lopez, the batter for the Grizzlies. He'll be followed by Jamie Jimenez, and then Carter Parsons for the Grizzlies. Swing and a miss, strike three. Quickly dispatched, two fastballs, and then a changeup. That was a nicely worked job by the pitcher. He threw a couple of heaters, and then he threw what certainly looked like a heater to the batter anyway, and he was way in front of that changeup. Five strikeouts for the starting pitcher, Shane Huffiger. Now a strikeout early here for Kyle Byers. at six strikeouts in the ball game for the Panthers. Number six, Here's Jamie now. Jimenez. Looks like we have a new hitter. Is this, uh, it is might it? be. Yep, I don't believe I've seen number six out here yet. I think we have a, yeah, they're making some lineup changes. I'm looking at the sunny side coach. He's making some notes. So I think uh, we have a new hitter here. It's hard to lose. 
losing track of all this now. Well, and the, the roster isn't yeah, the best say, either yeah, for Sunny's side, but... We don't even have it. Do we have a number six? No, on that's roster? happened several times I've noticed here on this roster. I think his last name I heard Ken say Maldonado, so we're going to go with at least that. Okay. Fires the pitch outside and a little bit low. Takes the count to three and one. One down here in the top of the fourth inning. Right handed hitter Maldonado takes strike there. Takes the count full now, three and two. This one outside on corner, strike three, and Maldonado goes down, and that's the second consecutive strikeout now for the new pitcher, Kyle Byers. I don't know if you could hear that or not, if our microphones pick that up, but that had some pop to it. He's got some... He's got a fastball, yeah. Byers. Here's Carson, but Carter Parsons now. Yes, look at that curveball. Do you see that? Just a big, slow looper. He's got a... He's oh, got, won the count. Nice quite base. the arsenal, doesn't he? That one outside, nicely done, nicely played in the dirt by Ronan Haynes. The count goes even now, one ball, one strike. Here's the pitch by Byers, doesn't take any time at all out there. This one's outside, and two and one. This Danny just winds up and throws. This one, a piece of it for Parsons, and it goes foul. Two and two now the count. That may have hit uh, Madison's Bentley. I think that may have hit her. <laughs> she has the top down in the convertible. And Byers so change up. He's three batters, three strikeouts. No runs, no hits, no errors in the top of the fourth inning. We go to the bottom of the fourth. It's still the Wenatchee Panthers 13, the Sunnyside Grizzlies 1. Bottom of the fourth inning coming your way in 60 seconds. we go it's the Panthers 13 and the Sunnyside Grizzlies one looks like a new pitcher once again uh, for the Sunnyside Grizzlies and this is Isaiah Lopez now on the mound third pitcher in fact fourth pitcher of the ball game and the seventh pitcher we've seen you know, with the two games combined for Sunnyside as I mentioned with the pitch counts and games like this you get in these 12 or 13 run games where there's a big difference uh, if you can throw the ball over the plate the odds are pretty good you're gonna end up on the mound at one time or another throughout the course of the afternoon absolutely once again I want to remind you keep it right here on the NCW Life channel this weekend it's full of sports tomorrow live coverage of lacrosse from the Apple Bowl right across the way from us as Chiawana comes to town to play the Wenatchee Valley Thunder Rod Higley with the call on that and then at 7 o'clock and it's a replay of the Wenatchee Wild between Vernon and the Wild, the game five of that series on March 23rd. And then on Sunday, we have more lacrosse for you. It's from 12 to 2. It's Southridge at Wenatchee. That's from earlier this month on the 16th, followed up by soccer action. West Valley at Eastmont from uh, March 20th. That's 2 to 4 o'clock from 5 to 7. Once again, from uh, March 24th, more lacrosse is Hermeson uh, against Wenatchee Valley Thunder. And we end our sports coverage on Saturday night at 7 o'clock once again play of Vernon and the Wenatchee Wilds. So the lots of sports this weekend. And the Town Toyota Center is filling up as we speak. In about a half an hour, they'll be dropping the puck. Game one of the BCHL semifinals. Trail Smoke Eaters, Wenatchee Wild. Looking forward to that. Ronan Hayes oh just my. hammers oh one my. right field and up against the base of the fence. Haynes rounds first base, heads to second with a stand-up double. And he is two for three with two doubles and a single now in this ball game. The typical left-handed hitter. He, he, he in the number three slot. He can hit for power. He can hit for average. He's just a junior. As I mentioned last year, he jacked a huge home run over the right field fence uh, into Lee off the field of the Apple Bowl. He's got talent. He's got a future in this game. Well, I think, I think he's got good size, yeah. too, as does the next hitter. Colton Dial has had a double and a single in this one. Panthers now a runner on second. Took something off that one. Did the pitcher Isaiah Lopez. Now a righty in there. So the Panthers so far in this game, it's through three and a half. Have seen a right-handed pitcher, a lefty, and now a righty again. 
Runner at second base, Ronan Haynes. Here's the shot, hard ball down to third base. Haynes watches the throw, and then he heads to third base, and Dial is thrown out there. It, it does advance the runner to third base, and that's really what it's all about. Now one down. And one of the reasons that Ronan Haynes could, could do what he did, which is lead off, stand there, and not run back to second base, you didn't have to worry about it because nobody was covering second base. That's right. So even if the, even if the third baseman wanted to throw back to second base to get uh, Ronan Hayes, there was nobody there to throw it to. So it's very smart base running on his part. Thomas Blakeney now at the plate. 0 for 2 with a walk and a run scored in this one for Thomas Blakeney. First pitch is a ball, 1-0 and the count. Colton Files on deck and in the hole, Chandler Holiday. Standing down at third base, Ronan Haynes, and here's the pitch and hit. It's in shallow no right Randy, field. Yep. Boy, misjudged a little bit there. The runner at third stays there. You think he thought he was going to catch it. And now the Panthers have runners at first and third. Blake Neon first and Ronan Hayes on third. Might be an air out there, Dan, or? Uh, no, it felt, uh, that was, uh, that was, that was a no man's land from the get-go. As soon as the ball came off the bat, I knew that was going to fall between the right fielder and the second baseman. That's pretty much what happened. I got to give him a base hit on that. Colton Files now at the plate. Also 0 for 2 with the walk and a run scored. Look how, look how deep the left fielder is playing. He's almost at the warning track out wow. there. Wow. Now, again, there's wind out there, but not that much wind. Two consecutive high pitches. Takes the count to 2-0 and oh here. One out in the bottom of the fourth inning. Sunnyside might just have one more shot at it here in the top of the fifth. Defensive positioning at the high school level is always a bit of a crapshoot. You just don't know. You know, you assume if it's a that's a great point. It's a right hitter, you're the right hand hitter. You're going to move a little bit towards left field and vice versa. But uh, you just don't have the scouts. You don't know. You just really don't know. A lot of it is just guesswork. Nice pitch that time. Curveball by Lopez gets it over for a strike. Three and one the count. On a windy day like this, you want your left fielder uh, to play a little bit farther back because the ball is going to carry more. But he's, he's way back there. Couldn't get that curve over, and that will send Colton Files to first base on a walk and loads the bases for the Panthers now with one down here in the bottom of the fourth inning, bringing up Chandler Holiday, who was hit by a pitch at a single and then flew out to a left field his last time up. Something off that one, too, and a strike on the outside corner. 0-1 the count. Following Holiday is Carson Emerson and then Gavin Woodring. And they may all hit before this inning is over. Just a piece of that one. Holiday off the end of the bat. Goes foul and 0-2 quickly. The count now on Chandler Holiday. Once again, one of those sophomores on this team, and there are a lot of them. Seven, to be exact. Bases loaded, one out, 0-2 the count. Here's the pitch, and it's popped up. Third baseline, and it looks like it's going to get out of play. Right over there by the brand-new indoor hitting facility. They Don't hit that building. About, yeah. Oh, it's okay. It's paid for. So unlike Matt Bentley. So on that, when you? did the new hitting building come into being? Uh, they then? built that last summer, okay. as a matter of fact. Went up very, very quickly. Oh, uh, it did. Yeah. They, I think they started uh, just a couple of days after the last day of school. And this is a pop-up right back to the pitcher, Lopez. And he misplayed it. It's an, Again, infield, it's an infield fly. fly. So they're going to get at least a double play out of this. So there's an out as well. Again, some pretty poor base running there. It was The call was made immediately. You had the bases loaded with less than uh, two outs. It's an infield fly rule. Everybody should have stayed right where they were. Uh, just bad base running there. And that is the end of the inning. Yep, it is, play. yes. Yep. It is double play. So we move to the top of the fifth inning, and our score is still Wenatchee 13 and Sunnyside 1. We'll be back here in 60 seconds. Stay with us.
to the top of the fifth inning, and this could be it if Sunnyside doesn't score a run here. It's the Panthers 13, Sunnyside 1, and once again, Kyle Byers on the mound. He struck out the side his first time on the mound last inning, and the Panthers are hoping he does the same here. If begin with the bottom of the order, Jerifin Lopez, our first batter, and then back to the top of the order. Here's a swing, and it's a pop-up to the shortstop. Short left field makes the catch for out number one. Just like that, and uh, he is a uh, the roster uh, lists Mr. Barnes, Kyle Kyle Byers, I should say, as a pitcher and an infielder. He's a he's like me. He's a big, strapping, handsome son. You know, of a you're guy, built you know a lot of like. Yeah. yeah, throw strikes. You know, probably the probably the most loved player on the squad. I'm assuming. <laughs> uh, I don't know if he's a regular pitcher and getting some work in, or I if, think if he's, he's not, he's he's good with that kind of stuff. Yeah. I'm thinking he is strike one. One on the next batter, Dylan Clampett. Once again, there is a 10-run mercy rule in high school baseball after five innings of play or four and a half if the home team is leading. If one team is leading the other by it, right. 10 or Two. more runs, the game comes to an end. One so thing we haven't Brent talked about, Dan, that? Sunnyside hasn't had a hit yet. No hits yet in this ballgame. Oh, my ball goodness. Game. You know what? You're right. Here's a pitch outside. Because they've used, what, three different pitchers, you kind of lost track of That's that. That's right. Oh, my goodness. This could be a team no-hitter. So Shane Huffiger, along with Byers, could complete that. We hope I didn't jinx him now. Two yeah, balls, really. two strikes. I'm pretty good at that. One out here at the top of the fifth. Clampett will be followed by Hunsaker and Brionis. I cannot believe I did not notice uh, that this was a no. You, normally, you don't see a no hitter, and yet a run still being right, scored. Right. And three errors by the other team. Yeah, that's what threw me for the right. Loop. This is that broke that up. See, I jinxed yep, There you go. As Clampett gets the first hit for the Grizzlies in the ball game. This concludes our broadcast. No, I'm kidding. Right. <laughs> fired. <laughs> Tyler Hunsaker now at the plate, right handed to batter. You got news to do on Monday, buddy. You're not going anywhere. All right. Isaac Brionis is on deck and. Nick Irvin in the hole for the Sunnyside Grizzlies. Our first base runner tonight, well, off a hit anyway. Mm -hmm. Swing and a miss and a strike, 0 and 1 the count. So again, Sunnyside needs to score three runs. They need to score three runs to keep this game alive or the game would end on the mercy roll. Fast ball outside and a little bit high, 1 and 1 the count, evens things up. It's early spring, though, Dan. It does cool down somewhat. Yes, it Once does. It gets a little bit later in the day. Here's the 1-1 one, one pitch from Byers. Hit hard out That's in the center the field. Should be an easy play out there, and it is for T.J. Shirting. And that's out number two. One more out for the Panthers, and they will win, sweep this doubleheader against Sunnyside. That'll bring up Isaac Brionis. They would outscore Sunnyside, let's see, 14-0, 10-0, 13-1 in three games. It's not bad. I don't know if that's indicative of uh, how good this Panther team is. We're pretty sure they're pretty good. That's right. Or just the struggles of the Sunnyside Grizzly program, or perhaps a combination of the two. Strike outside corner, first time up. Baronis flew out to the left fielder and then reached on an air his last time up. Run at first base, Dylan Clampett. <laughs> 0-1 the count, two outs, check swing, and that's a ball. Evens up the count at 1-1. One and one. Isaac Brionis, here's a hit into center field, curving back into TJ Shirting, and it goes off his glove and it missed it. So that will allow Clampett to go to third. Are they gonna send him? And they are. And Sunnyside will get a run here. As Clampett goes from first to third, uh, possibly an error out there. Yeah, had a, that, was, that was tailing on him. It really was. It, it was uh, tailing. TJ Shirting out there. On the other field. hand, it did, did hit his glove, and that's usually uh, an indication that uh, it's an error, and I believe they gave him an error, did they not? Not yet. Still okay. three for the Panthers. You're right. Band number 15, Nick Irvin. So that brings up the right fielder now, Nick Irvin. Struck out nice twice change in this up. one. Nice changeup. That's the one pitch I could never master this was the changeup. Byers has some stuff out here, Dan, I'm telling you. Nice fastball, a nice curveball as well. Checks the runner on second, delivers the home base and home plate, and the runner from second's going. 
And he will make it down to third as Isaac Baronis on that. I don't think it was a wild pitch, Dan. No. More of a pass ball, wasn't it? I think it was. I think it was just miscommunication. Uh, that's got to go on the catcher there, I believe. Got by Ronan Haynes there. One and one the count. That Little dribbler right back to Byers to first base, and that Just will do game. it, and that is the ball game. Our final score here from Rec Park, game number two of the doubleheader. It's Wenatchee 13 and Sunnyside 2. We'll take a three-minute timeout, come back and wrap things up from Rec Park right after this. Wilson and Dan Koontz back at Rec Park as we wrap things up for this doubleheader between the Sunnyside Grizzlies and the Wenatchee Panthers. The Panthers won the first game 10 to nothing on 10 run rule in the sixth inning and won this second game 13 to two on also the 10 run rule this time in the fifth inning. And Dan, we got to give a shout out to some of these hitters. Two for three for TJ Shirting, including a triple mm -hmm. and two for four for Dalton Thomas, Ronan Haynes, Col Colton Dial, and Carson Emerson. That is just a few of the the 16 hits for the Panthers. 16 hits, 13 runs, three errors for Wenatchee. Two hits, two runs, four errors for the Sunnyside Grizzlies as the Panthers now improve to 6-0 and oh in Big 9 play and 6-2 and two overall. Not a bad start for Wenatchee. Well, they're not going to have any other weeks like they had this week with a 14 to nothing victory on Tuesday, 10 nothing in the first game, and then the final today. Uh, that's simply not going to happen. That's And, of course, Coach Sender, he's happy with it. I mean, who wouldn't be happy Absolutely. with three dominating wins? But obviously, these two squads are miles apart as far as uh, talent is concerned. No, no slap against Sunnyside. That's just the way it is. Competition is going to get tougher, not easier for the Panthers, especially this West Valley squad. who got the better of the Panthers last year and won the uh, league championship. Right. So Wenatchee will have a week off for spring break this next weekend, and then we'll be back on the field right here at Rec Park, 4 o'clock, first pitch against Ike, and that will be Tuesday, April 10th. Next baseball here, I believe, is Wenatchee, excuse Excuse me, Eastmont and Moses Lake. Moses Lake and Eastmont one week from today at Dan Whitefield, I believe. And that'll be a lot of fun as well. We do want to remind you once again, keep it right here on the NCW Life Channel tomorrow for more live sports coverage lacrosse from the Apple Bowl at 1 o'clock as Chiawana takes on the Wenatchee Valley Thunder. And that'll wrap things up here from Rec Park. I do want to thank Dan Coons for helping. My thank pleasure. you so much. What I get. Hey, it's not working. It's watching a baseball game. <laughs> you know, that's true, too. Yeah. Also, Jessica, who's been up top across the way at the Apple Bowl. Getting cold out there. Thanks for all your hard work, Jessica. Concludes our broadcast. Caitlin, who does everything at the NCW Life Channel. Thank you, Caitlin, as well. So that'll do it here from Rec Park. We hope you have a great night and a fantastic Easter weekend. And good night, everyone. This concludes our broadcast of high school baseball on the NCW Life Channel. Tonight's broadcast was brought to you by the Wenatchee Valley YMCA. We now return to regular programming already in progress on your source for sports for North Central Washington, the NCW Life Channel.